Hello everyone, I'm Joyce Alkouri, and it's my great pleasure to be your host this evening for the 20th anniversary edition of the Opera Canada Awards, also known as the Rubies. Since the year 2000, Opera Canada has celebrated the achievements of over 80 operatic artists, creators, administrators, company builders, and patrons for their contributions, commitment, and dedication to our art form. And tonight, we will honour four more extraordinary Canadian artists who have excelled and continue to excel on the international opera scene. We will also be treated to performances by some of Canada's leading artists of today and be introduced to some members of the newest generation of emerging operatic talent. This year marks the 60th anniversary of Opera Canada magazine, founded by the late great Ruby Mercer in 1960. Over the course of six decades, the publication has evolved alongside the growth of performing companies across the country, bringing news, features, columns, and reviews to opera lovers throughout Canada and internationally. It is the longest continuously published classical music periodical in Canadian history, still publishing quarterly in magazine form, while also developing a strong online presence, maintaining its relevance for future generations. Alongside this institutional growth, we've witnessed the outstanding development of Canadian artists. Singers, conductors, stage directors, designers, composers, librettists, administrators, and production workers have all evolved in this country at a truly exceptional rate. The Canadian opera scene is internationally respected for its excellence in training and performance. And Opera Canada has always been there to tell our stories. It truly is the beating heart of our industry. I'm now very happy to introduce our first performer of the evening, one of Canada's most celebrated operatic artists, baritone Russell Braun. Russell's career has seen him perform extensively at leading opera houses and festivals throughout the world. His contribution as a proud Canadian to the international opera scene has earned him the Order of Canada, a Juno Award, and a Ruby. Tonight, he will perform the Tanzlied from Eric Korngold's opera Die Tote Stadt, Mein Sehnen, Mein Venen. Russell is accompanied at the piano by his wife, pianist Carolyn Mall. Thank you. 
Thank you, Russell and Carolyn. So now the time has come to announce the first of 2020's Ruby recipients, tenor Michael Schade. Please welcome one of Canada's iconic artists, recipient of the Order of Canada and Ruby honoree, tenor Ben Hepner, to present a short profile of Michael's celebrated career and the path which led him to international stardom. Well, thank you, Joyce. I'm thrilled to participate this evening in this auspicious and rather unique edition of the Opera Canada Awards. It's the 20th anniversary of the Rubies. Back in 1960, Ruby Mercer had a vision. She wanted Opera Canada to communicate to artists, workers, and students in the field, as well as to opera lovers and patrons all across our country. The magazine should contain news, reviews, and opinions about Canada's opera companies and artists. Everyone would have a home in the pages and online resources of Opera Canada. And tonight, it's my very pleasant task to profile a talented quartet of honorees for 2020. And what a class it is. Our four Ruby recipients are a very versatile group indeed. Singers, conductors, artistic leaders, professors, and mentors. So, let's get to it. Canadian tenor Michael Schada is charting a unique course in the music world. He was born in Geneva, Switzerland, and raised in Germany and Canada. He studied at St. Michael's Choir School in Toronto, the University of Western Ontario, and earned his Master's of Music degree at the Curtis Institute of Music in Philadelphia. In 1988, Michael attended the opera training program at the Banff Centre, singing the title role in Britain's Albert Herring. Shana made his professional debut as Giacchino in Beethoven's Fidelio with Pacific Opera Victoria, and early on he became associated with the operas of Mozart, Rossini, and Donizetti. Doch 
In 1990, Shada won the New York Oratorio Competition and made his debut at Carnegie Hall. A year later, he polished up his magic flute and made his European debut in Bologna. In December of 1993, he made his Metropolitan Opera debut also as Cecchino. Michael appears regularly at all major opera houses, including the Royal Opera House Covent Garden, Opera du Bastille in Paris, and Teatro alla Scala in Milan, to name just three. And he has a long association with the Vienna State Opera. In 2007, he and colleague Adrian Pijonka became the first Canadians awarded the Austrian title of Kammersänger. Michael Schada appears frequently in concert and recital, at Amsterdam's Concertgebouw, London's Wigmore Hall, Carnegie and Alice Tully Halls in New York, and the Concert House in Vienna. He recorded many discs with Nicholas Harnincourt, including the Verdi Requiem, Handel's Messiah, and Mozart's Die Zauberflöte. In fact, Michael won a Grammy for his recording of Bach's St. Matthew Passion with the Great Maestro. In addition, Michael has recorded Mahler's Das Lied von der Erde with Pierre Boulez and the Mozart Requiem with Claudio Abado. Michael was the creative director of the Young Singers Projects at the Salzburg Festival, and in 2014 he was appointed artistic director of the Internationale Barocktage Stift Melk through 2022. Three years ago, Michael Schade became an officer of the Order of Canada, and tonight it's our great pleasure to award him a well-deserved Opera Canada Award, the Ruby, Michael Schade. And now, from Vienna, Austria, I welcome tonight's first 2020 honoree of the Opera Canada Ruby Award, Michael Schade. It is with an extremely thankful, joyful, and slightly proud heart that I'm very happy to receive this year's Ruby. I was lucky enough to meet the great Ruby, and all I can tell you is she was a great, great lady. And so the choices of my fellow nominees and fellow winners this year, Barbara Hannigan, Master Yannick Nizisiga, and of course the late great Edward Johnson are just wonderful, wonderful winners and wonderful artists in their own right. I don't even know where to begin to say thank you. Timothy Vernon, 1988, who took a chance on me to do Fidelio in Victoria, Pacific Opera Victoria, February 1988. It was, a, it was an amazing time. Thank you for that. Thank you to David Spears, to Opera Canada, to Wendy Nielsen. David, a special thanks to you for getting me to come to the Calgary Opera right after graduating university. Thank you to Brian Dickey, to the late great Richard Bradshaw, to Neil Crory, to Alexander Neff, to so many people that I'm going to miss 8 billion of them. I just want to say thank you. I think one of the great things we can do in this terrible crisis that we're all in is to think of what Ruby would have done. I've never met a person who was more positive and more supportive to young Canadian singers and more proud of her country. From Canada and in Canada, we can do the greatest things in the world. So take a moment now and study. And if this building behind me can go through a pandemic and a destruction and can be rebuilt to become one of the greatest houses again in the world, so can Canada. I'm really truly believing that and I want to thank you from the bottom of my heart to one and all. God bless. The respect, success, and accolades garnered by Canadian artists over many decades did not happen by accident. It is the result of hard work, diligence, excellent training, 
and the willingness of Canadian opera companies to nurture and support its own young performers. It gives me great pleasure to now introduce soprano Midori Marsh, a recent graduate of the University of Toronto Opera School and this year's winner of the Canadian Opera Company's Ensemble Studio Competition. Tonight, accompanied by Alexander Soloway, Midori will perform the Willow Song from Douglas Moore's The Ballad of Baby Doe. Thank you, Midori and Alex. It's now time to welcome back our friend, Ben Hepner with the profile of tonight's next Ruby honoree for 2020, soprano and conductor, Barbara Hannigan. Canadian soprano and conductor Barbara Hannigan is a musical phenomenon. 
She was born in Waverley, Nova Scotia and earned her master's degree from the University of Toronto. She continued studies at the Banff Centre for the Arts and Creativity, the Steens Institute at the Ravinia Festival, and the Royal Conservatory of The Hague. Barbara's interest in contemporary music started young. At 17, she sang her first world premiere, and since then she's racked up more than 85 world premieres. Her collaborators include the who's who of composers, Boulez, Leggetti, and Stockhausen, among many others. Highlight performances include Lulu at La Monnaie in Brussels, Die Soldaten at the Bavarian State Opera, and Peleus et Melisande at the festival in Aix-en-Provence. She created the role of Agnes in Written on Skin by George Benjamin and appeared at the 2015 production of Poulenc's La Voix Humaine at the Paris Opera. In 2018, Hannigan's album Crazy Girl Crazy won a Grammy Award for Best Classical Solo Vocal Album as singer and conductor. She sang Brett Dean's Hamlet at Glyndebourne, George Benjamin's Lessons in Love and Violence at the Royal Opera House Covent Garden, and Berenice by Michel Jarrel at the Paris Opera. Two years ago, Barbara Hannigan was artist-in-residence at the Aldeburgh Festival. Last season, she became principal guest conductor at the Gothenburg Symphony in Sweden, and her conducting engagements this season include performances with the London Symphony Orchestra, Munich Philharmonic, Cleveland Orchestra, and the Toronto Symphony, and I'm just giving you half of her credits. Hannigan premiered the role of Gerda in The Snow Queen by Hans Abramson, and next season she'll sing and conduct the world premiere of Gerald Berry's Salome. Now, that's multitasking at its finest. In 2017, Barbara Hannigan created Equilibrium, an initiative where leading artists mentor young professional musicians. She's been Singer of the Year in Open Welt magazine and became a member of the Order of Canada. And tonight, we add yet another honor to her copious collection of awards, the Ruby from Opera Canada. Ladies and gentlemen, Barbara Hannigan. <laughs> Hello, I'm Barbara Hannigan, and I'm coming to you today from Bamberg in Germany, where I'm conducting as well as acting as the soloist with the Bamberger Symphoniker. I'm extremely honored to be recognized as one of this year's rubies by Opera Canada, along with my colleagues Michel Schade, Yannick Neze Seguin, and the late Edward Johnson. Together, we represent several perspectives of what it means to be involved in opera, covering the covering the aspects of singing, conducting, leadership, innovation, management, and mentorship. We are all multitaskers, and through our great love of this art form, we are able to use our training and our gifts to contribute to society, for artists are an integral part of society. We have been training as musicians since our childhood. We are highly skilled workers, and yes, it's really work, and we provide something beyond entertainment. We offer models for how to interact with one another, how to listen, how to collaborate in the creation of new works, how to create new productions and resurrect old ones. Through the stories we tell, through classical music, we can confront political issues, history, philosophy, and injustice. The art form of opera is, like the music itself, larger than life. To bring just one main stage production together requires years of planning, months of rehearsal, all of it including orchestral musicians, singers as soloists and chorus, technical staff, costume, wig makers, set builders, stage management, conductor, director, as well as all the management of the Opera House that keep the structure running. And then we have our audiences, our patrons, our critics, and as well publications like Opera Canada magazine who are devoted to the art form and bring awareness to audiences and support to us all. 
I remember arriving in Toronto in 1998 from Waverly, Nova Scotia. I was 17 years old. I went into the studio of Mary Morrison in the Edward Johnson building at 80 Queens Park Crescent, and I auditioned for her. The moment that she accepted me as her student changed my life. I think everyone has had a moment along their path like this, where there is a distilling of purpose and where energy galvanizes into a driving force. All those years I lived in Toronto, attending as many performances as I could. I was out every night listening to chamber music, the TSO, the COC, modern music, early music, jazz. My student years at U of T were a beloved experience. It was so exciting for a young woman from Waverly to see Wozzeck, Ervarto, Bluebeard's Castle at the COC, to sing in the chorus of U of T's production of Patience, to attend and later become a performer with opera in concert, to be a guest artist with the COC Ensemble, with Opera Atelier, and then later to continue my training at Orford in Banff and then in Europe. I hope that my efforts through creating the Young Artist Mentoring Initiative Equilibrium, as well as creating Momentum, which is a new initiative involving more than 100 international leading artists who have pledged to share the main stage with their younger professional colleagues, something so much needed during this pandemic time when so few concerts are actually happening. I hope that these efforts are in some way beginning to pay back the extraordinary generosity I have received. Thank you for honoring me in this way. Bravo to Opera Canada, to Opera in Canada, and to Canadian artists worldwide. Our next performer is a recent graduate of the University of Toronto Opera School, and now a member of the Canadian Opera Company Ensemble Studio. You may have recently heard him as the gamekeeper in Rusalka at the COC. Tenor Matthew Cairns, accompanied by Alexander Soloway, will now perform from Giordano's 1898 opera Fedora, the much beloved aria Amor Tivieta. Thank you, Matthew and Alex. Canada's reputation for producing world-class artists has existed for well over a century. And last year, the Board of Opera Canada decided to add a posthumous award to each year's Ruby's Gala. Last year, our inaugural honoree was renowned soprano Emma Albani. This year's posthumous honoree was no less celebrated and achieved his acclaim and recognition in two very distinct roles within the business. Here again is Ben Hepner to tell us the amazing story of the extraordinary Edward Johnson. Hey, 
Canadian operatic legend Edward Johnson was born in Guelph, Ontario in 1878. He was 20 when he moved to New York, and in 1904 he made his debut at Carnegie Hall. Three years later, Johnson made his Broadway debut in A Wall Stream by Oscar Strauss. He was an overnight sensation, but he wanted to study opera, so he headed to Europe. In Paris, Edward met and married Beatrice Darnero. They moved to Florence so he could have a career in Italy. To help make that happen, Edward Johnson became Edoardo Di Giovanni. He made his operatic debut as Andrea Chenier in Padua and sang regularly in the most important opera houses in Italy. In fact, he sang the first staged performance of Wagner's Parsifal at La Scala conducted by Arturo Toscanini. Di Giovanni also appeared in Buenos Aires, Madrid, and at the Royal Opera House in Covent Garden. In May of 1919, his beloved wife Beatrice died, and Eduardo Di Giovanni retired. It was as Edward Johnson that he made his North American opera debut in Chicago, and three years later, he made his Metropolitan Opera debut. For the next 13 seasons, he was among the top artists of that company's roster, singing Pelias, Canio, Romeo, and Don Jose, among others. In 1935, Johnson changed course. He became the general director of the Metropolitan Opera. And over 15 seasons, including the war years, Johnson added new works to the repertoire and hired some of the greatest artists of the 20th century. It's quite a list. Albanese, Bjorling, Merrill, Milanoff, Pierce, Stieber, Di Stefano, Tucker, Stevens, and Warren. And after he retired from the Met, Johnson returned to Canada, chairing the Royal Conservatory of Music in Toronto for 12 years and creating the influential Edward Johnson Foundation. The Faculty of Music Building at the University of Toronto is named in his honor. Edward Johnson died on April 20th, 1959. Johnson received many awards, including the Chevalier de la Légion d'Honneur in France and Commander of the Order of the British Empire. And tonight, we honor Edward Johnson as its 2020 posthumous recipient of the Opera Canada Award, the Ruby. Our next singer trained at the Metropolitan Opera's Lindemann Young Artist Program, San Francisco Opera's Marilla Program, and the Canadian Opera Company's Ensemble Studio. Her rapidly developing career has seen her debut with major opera companies throughout the world, from the Met to Cologne to Amsterdam, Houston, and then back again to the Met. Please welcome mezzo-soprano Rehab Shayeb, accompanied by pianist Tofer Mokshevsky, performing from Mozart's La Clemenza di Tito, De per questo istante.
Thank you, Ria Bentofer. Tonight's final Ruby Award honoree has experienced a meteoric rise in both the opera and symphonic world since reportedly making his career decision at the age of 10. Let's bring back Ben Hepner to profile the joyful, passionate, and incredibly full life of Yannick Nézé-Séguin. Canadian conductor Yannick Nézé Séguin began his ascent to the top of the music world early, at age five, with piano lessons. And when he was ten, he decided to become a conductor. He studied at the Conservatoire de Musique du Québec and Westminster College in Princeton, and then, at nineteen, Yannick met the great Italian conductor Carlo Maria Giulini. He ended up auditing his rehearsals and concerts for a year. The next year... Nazi Seguin founded his own orchestra, La Chapelle de Marial, and in 1998 he took on the task of chorus master and assistant conductor at L'Opera de Marial. In 2002, Yannick took over as music director of the Orchestre Metropolitain de Marial, and even now he returns to work with the orchestra. He calls it a lifetime commitment. Yannick was principal conductor of the Rotterdam Philharmonic Orchestra for 10 years and is now an honorary conductor with the band. Rumors have it that he likes tulips, Dutch cheese, and salty licorice. 2012 was a big year for the maestro. He became music director of the Philadelphia Orchestra. He follows in the footsteps of Stokowski, Ormandy, Muti, and Zavalish. And just this year, under his leadership, the ensemble was named Orchestra of the Year by Gramophone magazine. Eleven years ago, Nézé Séguin made his debut with New York's Metropolitan Opera. And over the next number of seasons, he conducted Don Carlo, La Traviata, The Flying Dutchman, Rusalka, Faust, and Otello. And in 2016, Yannick was named the Met's permanent music director. And just two years ago, he began his tenure at the hallowed Temple of Song. Yannick Nizé Seguin is a giant on the podium, one of the most talented, dynamic, and charismatic personalities in classical music. It's a great honor to name him one of this year's winners of Opera Canada's award, The Ruby. Ladies and gentlemen, give a big Zoom cheer for Yannick Nizé Seguin. Hi everyone, I'm thrilled, overjoyed, humbled to receive this Ruby Award. You know, I've been looking for many years, uh, looking up to those awards very much in this gala by Opera Canada. When I think of opera in Canada, I think of my, obviously my own experience, which my beginnings in 1998 with Opera de Montréal, where I was given the big responsibility of being chorus master and assistant conductor. I didn't know a thing about opera back then and I had to learn a lot on my own and you know through a lot of guidance around uh, in a very quick time and I fell in love of course with opera, uh, making opera, making being together, being part of something greater than us. I remember also of course my the great trust that opera companies around the country gave me my debut uh, the Vancouver Opera my first ever Faust which I will never forget with a great cast um, also you know I keep in my heart very much that this was my first time collaborating with a dear friend who has now gone to sing with the angels the absolutely extraordinary Erin Wall who I miss we all miss dearly and I'm dedicating this award actually to her um, then I remember my debut, of course, in Opera Hamilton, uh, Opera Ontario, uh, with the Kitchener Waterloo Symphony, um, with Lacme, Jane Archibald singing. I remember 
also my um, debut at the Canadian Opera Company with Faust once again fantastic cast Brett Polegato singing also um, and Opera de Quebec so uh, my operatic life has been very much rooted in this great these great experiences I have in Canada and I'm Actually, I miss it. I'm sad that my career is designed at the moment so that in, in a, such a way that I can do some things with Opéra de Montréal still, but not very much elsewhere in the country. But I know that Canada, and I'm proud that Canada is such an incredible force, and especially in music, in the lyrical side. You know, it's, been, it's always been this way, and I feel that maybe there's another golden age at the moment. Of course, in the meantime, it's very uh, distressing to see the situation of all the singers and the performers in Canada and uh, in the rest of the world. We are in a society where, you know, we have kind of a good social conscience about artists, but it's not enough. We need to consider artists as the true uh, bearers of the cultural life of our country and we need to ensure that everyone is able to uh, survive and be have the comfort of just making their art and their craft and be there when we're able to resume giving to the world and to the audience what they need which is beauty hope and dream and finally i'm dreaming after the pandemic of a world an opera world which will be even more inclusive more diverse, more equal, more equitable, and more sustainable. I think opera has always been reflecting our world, and now more than ever, it needs our imagination, all of us, all of you, and me included, to be part of a, a way of doing the greatest artistic quality and being even more relevant to the people we talk to. Thank you, Opera Canada. Congratulations on the, the 60th anniversary and hope to see all of you soon. So, ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for joining us tonight for our very unique Opera Canada Awards. I hope you have enjoyed and been inspired by the artists and honorees who have graced our stage this evening. We want to say a special thank you to our event sponsor, BMO, and to Nada Ristich, who has made that support possible. It's been a very unusual year in every way, and everyone at Opera Canada would like to express their appreciation for the continued participation of sponsors, donors, and subscribers in supporting our mandate. We look forward to the day when we will all meet again in person in the Opera House or wherever music and all arts are expressed with spontaneity and passion. Hopefully that time is not far off. Thank you for being with us tonight. Be well and be safe. Good night. <laughs>